everyone welcome to a session with Nina Rahul Gupta from Achievers Academy we had a last session about planning of writing task 2 today we are going to have the discussion on assessment criteria of writing task 2 IELTS before we begin the discussion let me remind you that IELTS writing task 2 is not a test of your knowledge is not a test of your general knowledge they are just testing your language ability about different general situations of our life. For example, the topic is crime, travel, education, education of children, bringing up the children, the role of teachers in kids' life, how books are important. You Are you getting it? These are the general situations of our life. Now, we have various ideas about various topics. We, we get 100 ideas about the topics, but we can't write them all. So, we need to understand on what parameters we are being assessed on what is expected out of us what are the parameters on which examiners are going to judge us if we understand that the task will be very easy for us we can plan it accordingly so now let's see the assessment criteria let's go back to our school days we started learning alphabets then we made words then we made sentences and this is how we started writing more and more especially during our English language exam and we had to do essay writing we used to ask for more sheets and we tried explaining the topic as much as possible but this is what exactly we are not supposed to do in IELTS essay writing in IELTS writing task 2 I mean now we need to understand technically on what parameters we are being assessed on so the first is task achievement now task achievement in itself is a term what you would understand you are given a writing topic and you need to write what you are asked for if the examiner is asking you to talk about agree or disagree or explain the statement or the problems and the solutions you need to write about that don't generalize the topic for example if the topic is agree or disagree you should be giving your point of view not from the people's point of view you are being asked whether you agree or disagree with the topic and remember if we relate to a science stream or uh, I mean non-medical students the commerce student or computer students they would always uh, try to give their special knowledge on the topic which is not supposed to be there most of the topics even say that write on the topic without any specialized knowledge on the topic you need to understand that the examiner may not be from the medical or computer or from the commerce stream. This is a test of your language ability. So you should be using the terms which are being used for the general public. If we are using the big words of biology, physics and chemistry, those won't help you getting good score on that. So if the topic is agree or disagree and I say that people should not do this, people should not... Uh, follow this this is what people are supposed to do now I'm not giving my opinion when it comes to my opinion that means I am trying to convince examiner in writing remember you are not getting an opportunity to convince examiner by an argument you are not getting an opportunity to talk to examiner so this is the only way where you should be evaluating your ideas the idea which has more weightage which is more convincing that should come first so task achievement is giving a shape to a writing and answering all the parts of writing task 2. The question might have different parts and you must understand before beginning that what problems are you supposed to address, what areas are you supposed to write on. The next is coherence and cohesion. We have already discussed in one session that most of the topics while writing go off track. Because we are writing with conscious mind and our subconscious mind keeps sending ideas to us. And when we start making paragraphs, the paragraphs are related to each other. But if we read this paragraph individually or we read this paragraph individually, this is not related to the question. Why it happens? Because we are thinking and writing, thinking and writing, both the things are going simultaneously. So we might get confused and we, we have not planned the topic so this would lead to this problem so in order to maintain coherence and cohesion in the beginning of every paragraph 
you must relate the topic to the question sentence. That means you need to give a general statement of the topic. Uh, we are going to discuss these terms also in the further sessions. Now let's come back to coherence and cohesion. If you do not give general statement in the beginning of the paragraph, this will not relate the topic to the question. So you need to tell examiner this is what I am talking about. This is the example to support the statement. Right? Now is lexical resources. It's vocabulary. We should use a range of vocabulary. We should not be repeating the words. But remember as I told you earlier. It's not advisable to use big and heavy words. You must use the words to express yourself. You can use uh, phrasal verbs. You can use one or uh, two quotations. And you can uh, try not repeating the same word. So remember to make a list of synonyms when you are planning your topic. Now is grammatical range and accuracy. Now, again, we had a discussion on grammar. Most of the students think that grammar is all about tenses. No, it's not. You need to use a combination of simple and the complex sentence structure. You should not be just keeping it complex and you should not be just keeping it simple. There has to be a combination. So, the band score is given on grammatical range and accuracy also. Remember, what you are using should be accurate as well. Using the words inaccurately, using the grammar inaccurately won't lead you to good score. And there are a few grammatical mistakes what we do on daily basis. For example, I will get some chocolates for you when I will go to market, which is incorrect. I will get chocolates for you when I go to market. So such things, the common mistakes we are going to again discuss in the further sessions. But today we are just keeping the session for the band descriptors. Yes. So these parameters on which you are being assessed are called band descriptors which is a very technical term which is being used by examiners but if you google it you will be able to find band descriptors for your help and you will know what is expected out of you when you are supposed to get 8 band score so once you google you will get a sheet i am going to display that sheet on the board also you will get a sheet which explains that what is expected in task achievement in grammatical range and accuracy in lexical resources and coherence and cohesion so that you are able to score seven bands or six bands or eight bands or nine bands so follow this and try reading this sheet while displaying it and if you want this sheet on whatsapp you can just uh, send your contact or you just comment in the comment section we will even, even arrange to send the sheet to you so i'm sure these band descriptors will help you arranging your topic and uh, meeting the examiner's expectations. Thanks. Now don't forget to subscribe and like for more videos. You can find more videos on IELTS, Grammar, Spoken English and on Career Counseling too. So you can even WhatsApp us on 9356335540. The number would be displayed down. Bye-bye.